6 o'clock and we're all here. Can we call this meeting to order? Y'all ready, guys? Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, Kari had put this, uh, you remember this um, contract for the website um, in our um, folder, but we did, we'd like to put it on the agenda. Did y'all get a chance to look at it? This is, this is another, uh, it's 675 to go on for another year. Um, we checked with Sarah and said, well, why can't we just use the CAI, CAI mapping system to do it? And she said, well, we would have to transfer the and system. Um, by the time we did all that, it would cost about the same. So she'd like to go this route for another year and, and work toward getting it all into my system in another year. So since we actually didn't warn it, I suppose we can't officially do anything with it and there's no hurry, right? Yeah, there's so no hurry. We've got two more months, so I'll, I was going to put it on the next time. So we'll bump it to the next agenda. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, minutes of April 8th. Somebody, have you all read them? Somebody like to move? So I'll move to accept. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Rose, are you all set? Can you hear us? And do you need us to do anything? You're, you're going to be trying to take minutes from there. Huh. No, she's, she's muted. Rose, you're muted. If you said yes, we didn't hear it. <laughs> hmm. I'll try to chat over there. OK. Um, I'm going to go on though. Have you all had a chance to look at the board orders? Would somebody like to move to sign those? All right, so moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so Kari, you got those, you're going to send them around? Yeah, with the rules of procedure. One more time. One more time. I don't think we need to vote on that one. We just no, need to sign it. Somehow the one that we signed disappeared. Or maybe we didn't sign it. We're not really sure. But. Okay. Um, community bank authorization form. Now that Sanders left us, we need to put that yeah. on. Yeah. So this is just authorizing the signatures of our bank accounts to be Jamie, Tegan, and myself. And so all that's doing is removing Sandra. Okay. And do we need to vote on that? Yeah, you're supposed to approve this, and then Jamie and Tegan and I need to sign it. Thank you. Okay. So so the. You guys have to sign the authorization form, and we don't. And, 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 and uh, Tegan's going to attest that you approved it in this way. Is Tegan, well, she'll it'll be on Tegan. We, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll so we need a motion then to authorize Kari, Tegan, and Barbara to sign. No, no. Jamie. And, and, and Jamie, I'm sorry. Yes, and rules and procedures. Yes, that's just the signature page. Would you guys Just sit and sign it. Thank you. Um, I was like, oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you just signed your house over again. As long as you take the baby. <laughs> um, okay, I need a motion then to authorize Kari, Tegan, and Jean to sign the community bank authorization form update. Somebody please move that. So moved. Anne has moved it. So I'll second. second. Dottie seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And Rose confirmed she didn't hear us. Okay. <clears throat> um, public comment. Would any members of the public like to? I guess that's you guys. Do you guys want to talk at this point? No. Okay. No. All right. You go again. Thanks. And Toby's not coming to talk about the road standards. Uh, it's funny. I talked to him earlier this morning, and he was planning to come. Okay, well, this wouldn't be so good. No. Um, essentially, Toby has updated. Do you all understand what's going on? I'll just recap here. I know you do, Donnie. You were in that meeting. Um, Donnie and, and, um, and I and Kari met with Toby and went through them a little bit so to get an understanding. So the standards that we adopted, the CALIS standards, were adopted in 2015 and approved by the state. 
in 2018, the state adopted the, a, a law that created the um, hydrologically connected segments of the road and, and adopted some standards that apply to those segments. And what Toby is proposing is that we bring it up to, to we, we incorporate those standards for those segments of roads into our standards. Um, the drafting, it needs a little work on the draft. So what I'm going to propose is that um, Kari and Toby work to pull the draft together in a way that's easier to read next time so we can see exactly what's going on. But meanwhile, I think the three of us have, have enough that we could answer questions. If any of the three of you have any questions about, the other three of you have any questions about that draft. No, only, my only concern is that our existing local standards are not in compliance with the local road standards. So any work that we do, whether hydrologically connected or segments that are adjacent to hydrologically connected, um, the state would want to see in the manner that they consider best practice, which is the ditching and the crowning right. and the, um, yeah. So I mean, I, was also thinking that it might benefit, you know, we have a lot of roads on the map that we would see that are level, low traffic, that perhaps taking a road as a test road and putting up those flippity floppy things that's always put out by is to narrow the road to 12 feet so people can see what that feels like. Right? So, right. so flippity floppy. Well, yeah, I don't know what they're called, but the, the reflector things. Oh, yeah, they yes. break so you don't destroy your vehicle. There's Oh, those poles. But it means so that people can be like, this is a 12-foot road. This is what it feels like. Because my concerns, particularly with climate change and what we've seen over the last year and a half, that not meeting the state standards, which is scientifically based, is not willy-nilly, is going to so cause us a lot of problems. Do you mean other than the ones that Toby has? Toby incorporated most of you know, the, the ditching and crowning because there's a lot of, in our existing standards, you know, there's a real push to not ditch, low ditch, let everything run into the forest, tree canopies be preserved, and yeah, so I mean, those are kind of contrary. What I'm trying to understand is, are you saying you'd like to see those in all the roads, or are you saying you're happy with what Toby's proposing? I think that the more that we can adhere to the state standard is, and also for our crew, for an ease of understanding, and they don't have to flip through a binder and be like, well, this road, I'll go to subsection C and this and that. And All right, I think Kari wants to say something. Yeah, so uh, well, this relates to a, a secondary issue that came up. I don't know, many people are aware of this, but um, what's been discussed so far relates to these hydrologically connected that are, um, segments, which are as part of the MRPG, the Municipal Road General Permit. And requires that we have, you know, certain standards, and, and mainly how it will impact our standards is ditching, or you know, it's just more specific materials that can be used, depths of ditch, and that sort of thing. But another issue that's come up that the MRPG doesn't speak to, but is it our own standards, is that the very low traffic roads, which are, you know, a, a fair amount of our roads are very low traffic, and they're designated that way anyway. <coughs> Our standards specify that they can't be any more than 12 feet wide. And that's just not the case as I, as I get to know our road system. And so we have to decide what to do about that. We're not in compliance with our own. I don't think the state cares so much about this, but what do we want to say about that? Are we going to actually narrow roads? Are we going to change that standard? So that, that's a, a, a second issue. And then a third issue that it, I need to look into a little bit more is the speed limit business because our standards specify maximum speed limits, but they don't speak to the state requirements for doing mm -hmm. speed studies, yeah. which we know is the case. And so it seems like our standards should refer to that somehow, but I, I need to understand better what the law actually says. So that's different from what Anne's saying, if I'm understanding correctly. I think so, because the MRPG is very clear about these hydrologically yeah. connected segments. But then even around, most of our roads are hydrologically, I mean, just in a, you know, it's, it's a large swath of town. Yeah, it's about, what, 40% of the road. Yeah, you know? yeah, something like that. And then the ones that, because a lot of times when you're doing the, the work, you're also working on sections of road that aren't connected, but it's impractical to go from 
told me no ditch. Then all of a sudden you go to a normal, you know, because that would be another issue with well, keeping a 12 foot width if you have the proper ditching because people will definitely One be thing that the four of us talked about was perhaps um, trying to at least identify, this wouldn't be hard, large sections of road that are not hydrogeologically connected and be clear that the back road standards of CALIS apply to those. But where it's, diff you know, where there's transitions and places that are hard, maybe too close together and you can't identify it, to be a little more lax on that and maybe having some language about that in the uh, draft just to, to that point. Okay. okay. I think it does, it's more difficult to maintain those roads in our current standards as they are when you have trees covering it, yeah. impacts them drying out, it just, and it's harder for people to have to drive where they're going during that huge length of time during what the year. What so. I'd like to suggest we do is Carvey and Toby will work on this draft. They'll bring it to us. Yeah, would you think you can have it at the next meeting, Kari? Uh, I'm not going to promise that. But okay, we'll as soon as they bring it to us, we will then take a look at that. And then I'd like to suggest we hold a public hearing and let people come in and comment on it and we can have a, a, a town discussion about it. Yeah. All right, does that make sense? Okay. Okay, is Paul Hannon here? He was going to try to... No, I don't see him yet. All right, and neither is Larry. Well, in our folder, we have um, a request that we, um, was it $2,600? We, we give... Um, can, can we make a suggestion? Yeah. We're 25 minutes ahead of schedule, so maybe we should move on to a different topic. <clears throat> you see Nick's here and... Um, Maybe some other topic we can do. Observation time. Okay, thanks. Yeah, let's, Nick, let's see. For you, we're doing the emergency management plan, which we've all, we, it looks to me the same as last year's. It's very similar. This is the annual update uh, required by Vermont Emergency Management and SEMA. And <clears throat> the, the one that you received over the weekend um, made a couple of small changes since then, uh, added a couple of names. Um, the emergency management coordinator now is Jake Aho. Uh, <clears throat> Toby uh, was the coordinator, um, but he's staying on in his role as um, probable <clears throat> incident commander uh, who, there on site, on, on site in an emergency incident. And uh, he's still a member of the committee as one of the select board. Um, other than that, it's uh, it is very similar to last year, just with additions and, and updates of contact information. Barbara, am I missing any highlights that I should be speaking about? I don't think so, other okay. than everybody on the emergency management team had a chance to weigh in and add any new information and so forth. And then I also asked both Kari and Tegan to weigh in. So we did a pretty good job of canvassing the folks who might know of new changes to make to it. Okay. So uh, I have, do you have a paper copy there? Okay. I do. I have a paper copy of the signature page. Okay. Actually, the, I just saw that the, they now say that the typed uh, name serves as an electronic signature, so. Um, do you, since I've got a signature page, you want to go ahead and sign it? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Oh, first we need a motion. I'm oh, sorry. No, it says that the, the a municip municipality has adopted the NIMS. I, I understand what the LEMP is, but what's the NIMS? Uh, National uh, Incident Management System, which is. Oh, that's a oh, time. Comes out see. of FEMA. And uh, this okay. is an inventory of what equipment we have uh, for uh, mostly. Well, yeah, for emergency response. Okay, so what we need then is a, a motion that we hereby adopt, or have we done that in the past and we don't have to redo it? Um, adopt and approve, yeah. We hereby adopt and approve the NIMS and the LEMP. <laughs> That's the local emergency management plan, which is what's in front of you. So would somebody like to move that? So move. Oh. And move okay. Ann Winchester to sign on behalf. And move Ann Winchester to sign. Yeah. And move Ann Winchester to sign. <laughs> There's a second. So there are two signature okay. documents. The other one is. Uh, I didn't know about the MI. I didn't know about that one. Oh, uh, that's just part of the 
local emergency <laughs> national. I, I looked at it and I didn't see a specific page. <laughs> there is a there is a page uh, on it's called the uh, municipal adoption form. And did that come through? Uh, I, I looked at what you sent, but I didn't see a signature page. But it, can can this like board officers can design it? And even if she does assign it tonight, she yes, could get it. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. I don't see any other signature page. Oh, okay. Yeah, I may, I may have. Neglected. Okay, so let's get clear here. What's the motion to adopt and sign the necessary documents regarding the NIMS and the LEMP? Will that cover it? I, I actually think that all you need is um, that the the select board is voting to approve the approve LEMP. and sign yeah. and authorize me to sign. Yes, okay. I, I think that does. Rose Yelset. I guess I'm sure she is. All right. Would somebody like to move that? Sound good. Ann Truman has moved it. Jamie's seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Um, and did you want to talk about Jake, or are you just going to go ahead and. Oh, okay. that, I'm sorry. That was the other change, is that, um, well, I think I did mention that Jake is now uh, appointed by me to be the coordinator. I'm, I'm the director, he's the, he's the coordinator. Um, I had a good conversation with uh, Toby about this yesterday, and he agreed that since he is already the emergency management coordinator for the town of East Montpelier, it makes sense for him to try to not try to do both of those, especially during an emergency event. So, but um, we're, Toby's an important part of this whole endeavor as uh, and I checked the statute after we talked, and indeed, we don't have to approve your appointment. Your appointment. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can I just get that signature page back? Uh, I'm not quite sure. My name is typed in here. That's okay. Just sign where, where it, it should be printed. Oh, well, I thought you could do so. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's, just, that's great. Thank you. All right, I see that Paul is here and, and Larry's here, so let's go back to the response of uh, oh, okay. survey. We're already there. Yeah. All right, hold on Everybody has seen Larry's request. Paul's here if you'd like to ask questions. Paul, do you want to say anything about it to us? You have to unmute yourself, Paul. Unmute. Got it. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm on my phone. I've done a lot of Zoom, never on my phone. I can see you. I think it's probably fine. Um, I'm sitting here in my empty new house in Massachusetts. <laughs> I can I can show you around. There's nothing here except one rocking chair. Anyway, um, if you read Larry's request, I don't have a lot to add. I have... Uh, fair amount of guilt for having come as far as I have and not finished the survey. I didn't plan to move when I started, at least not this far away. I was planning to move, but not uh, not down to another state. And so, you know, on a selfish level, I would love it if you supported Larry's request just so that the hours and hours and hours I spent in the town clerk's office sorting through deeds and poking around in the woods, finding the boundaries on the place, uh, didn't go to waste. But I think if you want to find a public purpose behind approving the money, it's really land ownership comes with some responsibilities. And at law, you're sort of expected to maintain your boundaries. And for lots of reasons, um, you know, so people don't timber trespass over on you and certainly so that you don't timber trespass over on somebody else. The laws have been changed recently to become rather draconian if you do uh, err and cross over on someone else's land. But just on a, on a general basis, you know, having everyone know where the limits of the town forests are is pretty important. And as I said, kind of a kind of an obligation of land ownership. We have found the boundaries. I think there are some a few kinks to work out that the woman that I'm um, suggesting finish the work uh, will certainly be able to iron out. They are now flagged. Uh, flagging will last 
Oh, we had, they were, it was flagged last year. Becky and I went around and found the boundaries and we found the flagging, but I would say in two years, you're going to be right back where I, where I started looking desperately for the uh, little bits of barbed wire and the occasional, you know, set of stone walls that are falling, starting to sink into the ground. Um, it was a complicated project. I think in Larry's report, I, well, I didn't really keep track of my time. I'm sure that Barbara could relate how many hours I spent poking around in the land records. Um, but I'm guessing it was between ten and fifteen thousand if i if I actually kept track of all that time. So again, you know, it's it, to 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 sort of waste that after two or three years of of deteriorating flagging seems sad to me and maybe a little penny wise pound foolish not to go not to go ahead i realize that money's tight i realize that tax rates are going up and i also realize that i don't pay taxes in Tal Calis anymore so i don't <laughs> i don't have to care quite as much personally but it really is pretty important frankly i think you know uh tom blatchley and i went and found the lines again pro bono on the uh Oh, come on, Larry, help me out. Like the Chapin, uh, the Chapin parcel. And again, same thing there. There's, some of the lines were not bad. They were already blazed or there were pretty good evidence, but a lot of them weren't. And there's flagging over there. So uh, I think the town has an obligation to maintain the parcels and main, let unf unfurl their flag, as they say, uh, and let everybody know where the limits are. But other than that, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, where the money comes from will be a good debate. Um, but I think, oh, one, and and I spoke to Ann over the weekend, and one thought she had was getting other neighbors to pitch in. Um, you have quite a few abutters on that parcel. Some people that front on the county road uh, one woman I talked to really didn't know where her back boundary was. So in a sense, we've provided a service to her by finding the old fence lines, which are more than likely the the intended boundaries. She would benefit. I can't conjure up her name as I sit here. Larry himself, uh, you know, Larry's, there's a few drill rods that were set out there and an iron pipe on the shore. And I I couldn't find any deeds that said, go to these drill rods and this iron pipe and that's the boundary it was kind of a mess and so i that's the one area that for sure i'm recommending a boundary agreement and i think larry's amenable to that whether I, i'm not going to speak for him whether he wants to kick in money for it or not but you know he has he benefits from it uh the woman i mentioned fronts on the county road there are some other people who had surveys and it made things a little easier david morris for example who moved from next to the old west church over onto Bliss Pond Road, they have a survey and that was helpful. When you go farther up that west boundary, Dwight Baker did a survey, oh gosh, probably for Lamphere back in, I'm gonna say the eighties. And those lines were not too bad to find, but the folks who now own the farm next to the Old West Church, those lines were pretty hard to find. There's some stone walls, but um, they would certainly benefit from uh, completing the survey at least you know, for those boundaries, those parts of their boundaries. So approaching that, it's not uncommon to have uh, people get together and say, I sometimes refer to it as the survey lottery. You know, if you're the first person that says survey my land, you pay for it and others benefit, but it's not uncommon for neighbors to recognize that they too benefit and therefore kick in some money. Um, okay, well, let's, so. let's give people a chance to ask their questions. Um, Anybody, Jordan? Uh, Paul, is there been any any open dialogue with the the abutting property owners, and whether or not there's like any any anticipate? It sounds like everybody stands to benefit from it, and and, and this will likely have to go through kind of a, an announcement and dispute period. Is there any indication that that any folks would dispute kind of the findings of the survey so far? You know, a, a survey is, in a sense, a bit like a lawyer's opinion. Or a, 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 yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm confident that I have found the lines again with the except the lines that are justified by deed calls or maps on, that are on record, 
again, Larry's Larry's uh, boundary being one exception. Um, I've had some conversation with the folks uh, who bought David Morris's place. They, I don't think they know where their lines are. Were uh, they may now since I flagged them. I have I've had conversations with them, but I at the time the, the conversation I wasn't I hadn't quite figured out where things were. Um, I, I do now. I feel confident. I know they don't. Well, I'm, I say I know. I suspect they don't because uh, some of their posted signs don't really agree with where their boundaries are. Um, there, I, I have heard that they're concerned with the public uh, trespassing onto their land. It's a benefit to them to have the lines well blazed and painted. Painting, painting your blinds is something you should probably do at a minimum every 10 years and ideally every six or eight depending on the quality of paint you use and all that kind of stuff. So okay. I had a conversation again with a woman who bought Phyllis Chase's house that fronts on the county road and she basically had no idea where her boundaries were. And we've since we've since found shreds of, of barbed wire that seem like the best evidence of that. So have I had conversations that say, do you agree with this? No, I haven't. Um, could there be a dispute? They'd have to go get their own surveyor, and frankly, I'm not sure another surveyor would come up with any any different um, interpretation of, of what I have. Mm -hmm. well, most of the most of the property that butts uh, the folks that bought David Morris's place is well described with a map. It's not a perfect map, but it's a George Cook map that was is recorded and and shows the boundaries. So it's it's pretty solid. Um, I I don't know if that answers your question, but Oh. Yeah. 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 Anybody, anybody can disagree I, with a survey, I but just, it means they've got to go get their own surveyor and pay a bunch of money. Okay. Paul and I have not talked about this in great detail, but it seems pretty clear to me that um, out of an abundance of caution at a minimum, we would be needing to communicate to you know in writing with all the budding landowners, um, telling them what we're doing. And if we have the information at that point, telling them or, or having a map to show them uh, where it would be, um, and also letting them know that uh, at a certain point we'll be uh, blazing that, uh, but we might want to leave some time for people to find out if people are okay with it before we actually start cutting trees that they might or blazing trees that they might claim on their property. But does this quote include blazing? Uh, it does. Uh, yeah, and it's, it does. It, it's this is, Paul and I talked about this. I, I've been playing phone tag with Becky because I'm guessing everybody who works outside is, is, is scrambling to make up for lost time, and she certainly is. Um, <clears throat> but um, um, there, there, there are a couple of places um, that I'm personally worried about um, because um, they show up on maps they show up on our tax map, which is horribly inaccurate in, in my judgment, but I, I've got some things I can pass around let you see. Um, but they also seem to show up, uh, the one that I'm most concerned about, uh, which is the old uh, David Morse property, um, they show up in the, in the easement deed that, the, that Catherine and David um, gave to the town and the way they describe the, 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 the distance of the easement and where it terminates coordinates exactly with a map which shows a huge triangular piece taken right out of the town forest. And I've got, it's kind of hard to see it on this map, but I, I could, if anybody wants to talk about it, I can, I can show you that. Um, and there's just a dramatic difference between what everybody, I say everybody, the state and the town have have relied on as the as the um, property boundaries and what what this thing shows. Uh, it, it shows an atrociously inaccurate line down on the south side on the Valentine's property, which they had on the market uh, until they took it off earlier this year. Um, it, it shows that if it were correct, the town owns uh, I don't know how many acres, probably 10 or 15 or more acres of land that they've been regularly timbering over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need to sort all of this out. Mm -hmm. um, but back, I can't remember, a year or two ago, uh, when we found out that Valentine land was going to go up for sale, 
the Conservation Commission and subsequently the Select Board got really excited about the possibility that the town could acquire the forest land that's, that's adjacent to the town forest. And clearly, if we ever got around to having that discussion with the Ballantines or others, and, you know, a, 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 a reliable survey would be really important to us as well as them. But anyway. Okay. Can I ask another question? Is, is one of the outputs uh, of, of this survey uh, going to be uh, like an updating of the of the plat? That, yes. Yeah, okay. I don't know that there is an official plat. Just the, just the, 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 the end product from the surveyor's standpoint is a recordable mylar map that yeah. gets recorded in the land records. The process of amending the tax map. Let me let me just parenthetically say I've said for years if tax maps were perfect, I'd be out of a job. So it, it it never it never troubles me when I find glaring errors on a tax map because of the amount of time that they put into creating them just isn't the same as doing a survey. So a survey by a licensed surveyor supersedes whatever the tax mappers have come up with. So. Short answer to your question is yes, the tax map would be amended with the next uh, set of, of amendments that, that are sent to the tax mappers and it would get straightened out. Oh uh, yeah, no, I, I wasn't so so concerned about the tax map. They're, they're generally pretty explicit in saying that they are uh, unofficial representation of property, uh, property lines, yeah. but I, I, um, if, if the plat is gonna be updated or, or re recorded, um, for the first time, it, it would require a, a process of notifying property owners for a pre period of time, or adjoining property owners for a period of time, and then. Um, yeah, that's well, there's, pretty, pretty there's nothing that process. requires. There's actually nothing that requires that. Oh, I mean, really? if, if you looked at a set of best practices for surveyors, which most of us can't afford to do, you'd be sending certified letters to every abutter. And there are some surveyors that do it, but they tend to be government surveyors who have the luxury of not worrying about a budget. Um, but yes, so they, they'll be on notice once the map is recorded. Um, and then again, they could dispute it, but I think they'd have to go find a, another surveyor to disagree with what we've done. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, uh, yeah. The idea for me to secure like grant funding to pay for this. Uh, no, I'm not aware of any grant source, but I, I confess I haven't uh, gone looking for it. It just never occurred to me that there could be money okay. to pay for it. Like they might it. possibly like the Vermont Community Forestry.com. I don't know all the ins and outs, yeah. but there's you know, several. Well, I'm certainly, certainly happy to, to go looking for some. I, uh, I have been assuming all along this was the town's obligation, the town's problem, but. Oh, no, it is, but coming into a state where we're already tight from the flood yeah, and moving into a lean year, yeah, yeah, trying to... I mean, the question to me was honestly more one of will it come from the towns somewhere in the operating budget or will it come from the conservation fund, which is, I think I well, said that's, before. That's what we're going to get to, but let's, let's see if we've got any more questions. If everybody else said, okay, let's talk about that. Well, um... <laughs> I, don't, I haven't read the guidelines or the authorization of the, of the fund recently enough to speak confidently about them, honestly. But it was it was my judgment that this could be justified as an expenditure under the conservation fund. Mm -hmm. We would prefer it not be used, of course, because that's really valuable money that is, is often used and we hope will be used much more frequently in the future as kind of seed money to go with a Vermont land trust easement or things like that. Right. How much do you have in there now? Um, right now, with the uh, 5000 that should have been credited after mm -hmm. the budget was approved, there's something like 52000 I think. 52. Okay. Let me, and can I just suggest for a second and say, um, it's, I, I, think, I, have, I haven't read the guidelines in a while either, but I think it's, it would certainly be considered a maintenance kind of thing. Um, it's also not unreasonable to think that a log job, either on this forest or another forest, depending on what the forest management is calling for, forest management plan is calling for, uh, would be a very logical reason to to use some of that money to to cover the survey. Um, in fact, I think Larry Larry mentioned that he's 
the, the management plan is rather dated. Forest management plan is rather dated. Uh, and that there is one of the first recommendations was survey this property. So, yeah, I, I, I went back and looked at that today. I couldn't find it in the 2004 uh, forest management oh. plan. So I'm not sure where I saw that now, but it, it was the top of some of this, the things that need to be done for the forest. Does anybody but have I guess what I'm saying is there's a, there's a very logical connection between the logging operation, if, if in fact that's recommended or contemplated, and marking the boundaries. So does anybody have any thoughts about whether we should find the money to pay for this? I mean, you they, expressed. Well, they seem to have enough. The conservation fund would seem like an appropriate use of that. I would have reluctance to try to find it in our general fund. We're already very tight, and there's some pressing needs that we need to address. Um, <laughs> Fully support doing it. I think we should do it. I don't have super strong feelings. We could also potentially split it uh, between the fund and the, the general fund. Um, but clearly, it should be done. It's a relatively small thing, probably. Um, <clears throat> but Paul had talked with Becky about this, and it's implicit in her proposal. Uh, for the second part of this, which is the blazing and all, um, if if those of us on the Conservation Commission or others were willing to help out and do some of the work, that um, figure that she has there is potentially something that would drop a bit. I don't know how much, but. One thought I have is that we could ask you to take the money out of the Conservation Fund, but when budget time comes around, we could roll that in, we could talk about it at that time as to whether or not we should replace the money when we develop the next budget, yeah. which is hopefully going to be a lot easier than this last budget. That's a good idea. So there, there is a question um, that we can resolve tonight, or if, if you're not ready, some other time, that is, if, if we agree to do this, are we willing to sign the contract with Becky Gilson that, that she's proposed? If, if we tell you to take out of the conservation fund, do you need specific authorization from us, or do you control the the? Uh, you fund? do. We do. You so do. we would have we control to control none of the none of the ability to okay. to use that. We so just recommend. you would need a vote from us then to authorize you to take the money. To, to authorize us to take the money, and, and of course, obviously, to authorize entering into a, a contract with her. And, uh, oh, which we would have to do. Yes. We we would be the ones to do it. Yeah. Okay. And in which case, we could actually sign this tonight if we vote. You could. Okay. And my understanding is twenty six thousand plus blazing. Uh, twenty six hundred. Yes. Plus blazing. <laughs> plus another twenty four hundred. Doesn't it look a lot better now? <laughs> plus some um, another twenty four hundred for blazing and painting. Uh, it's broken down into two categories. Um, the uh, surveying part of it is a total of $2,600. Um, the, um, what they call, what she calls section B, which is blazing and painting lines, is not to exceed $2,400. So that, the, so the total more like is 5000 which is yeah. what we talked about, but with the potential that that 2400 might drop if we could provide enough help in doing the dirty work out there. Okay. What is your pleasure? I just have how, one. Uh, so, sorry, just a clarifying question. How confident are we that this is an appropriate use of the conservation fund? I'd be, I'd be happy to go back and, um, I mean, I, I think there are some folks who would argue it's probably not. Um, um, Stephanie, do you have a thought on that? What did you say? Do you know if it's an authorized use of the conservation fund to use it for the surveying and painting and blazing? I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked at the criteria for a while. For I, don't, a while. Okay. I honestly don't see how surveying would come under our criteria for yeah. it yeah. would. Um, I'm saying, yeah, I'm just, yeah, it means I hear you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, we use it, you know, it can be used for purchasing or 
you know, easements, tort easements within, for educational purposes, definitely, but I'm not sure this falls within that. Okay, well, it sounds like we better ask you to come back to yes. at the next board. Like oh, yes, hi, Tegan. The Conservation um, Fund is controlled by the select board. Any expenditure must be approved by them, blah, blah, blah. Funding can be used in a number of ways. For technical assistance, legal work, surveying, appraisals, et cetera, to callous landowners yeah. who've <laughs> entered into an agreement to conserve their land, to provide local matching funds as required to leverage private, state, and federal grants for significant conservation projects, to purchase resource lands or conservation easements, to conduct okay. educational and public outreach. Uh, this you, list you is not me. exclusive. Experience in conservation <laughs> teaches us there are many creative and flexible ways to protect resource lands. Okay. Oh, what do you guys want to do? I just had one other question, which is, um, <laughs> is it worth having dialogue with other surveying folks to, you know, get other quotes, or is that a great deal? I just uh, don't know. I mean, I think, in my experience, that's a uh, smoking me. deal relative <laughs> to the amount of work that Paul has done, and to bring it across the finish line, that's... Uh, that's that's pretty good. I, you know, I'm not, without knowing where we are in, in kind of the town's operational fund, just to kind of make the decision for for the town to pay for it to kind of keep you know minimize impact to the conservation budget. Um, I think that's a, a, a little tough. But you know, if there's a sense of urgency to um, to keep it moving forward, uh, I think paying for it out of the conservation fund to get it done and then having a conversation uh, for making sure that the recouping of that is 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 accounted for in the next budgeting process so that i you know i think that would be the, an easy way to move forward quickly um, if you're feeling like would you, you like to put that in the form of a motion <laughs> <laughs> i mean if that sounds if that sounds like something everybody else would support um, and kind of keep the project moving forward then, yeah, so I would make a motion to uh, to uh, approve Anne, or authorize Anne to sign uh, the contract for completing the survey of the uh, town forests um, and for it to be paid for out of uh, the uh, conservation uh, budget or the conservation fund. Um, with the understanding that um, that the select board will revisit adding that expense to uh, to the next fiscal year budgeting um, and kind of replenishing the fund to offset that cost. You put it not to exceed number. Uh, not to exceed. Well, it's in the contract. Twenty. Uh, it's five thousand would be the total. Yeah. Uh, Twenty six yeah. plus twenty four. So, yeah, so, yeah. 5, 000, not to exceed 5,000. Yeah, she's pretty explicit about what her um, hourly rate and all is for work that's not covered. Okay. And including some of the stuff we've talked about tonight that the town recognizes. Let's be sure we've got a clear motion on the table here. Does everybody understand the motion? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, now further discussion. Mm -hmm. So, in Jordan's motion, uh, he said the town boars might have asked Rose to oh. specify the Bliss Pond town yeah. boars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Three. Yeah. Rose, you okay? Yeah. I, she'll let us know if she's not. <laughs> Okay. Just, just to be very clear about this proposal, there is a component, the $2,600 is, is an estimate, that's the way it's framed, for the first part, the, you know, the calculation of the boundaries. The blazing is a not to exceed 2400 And then there's, it very clearly says that there are reimbursable costs on top of it. You know, um, reproduction, mileage, monumentation, I don't know. That's, that's spending the money to get a big concrete thing or something else to put down on the corner, I think, Paul, right? Yeah, there's probably a dozen corners out there that need to have at least, I, I always said five-eighths inch, four foot long, five-eighths inch rebar with an aluminum cap with my license number on it. I think Becky does the same, the same thing. Um, you know, they're not terribly expensive, but it's it's a reimbursable mileage. She's probably going to come from Waterbury a couple of times. Um, I, I actually think, to some extent, 
Becky and I have a very good relationship, and I think she's doing this as much as a favor to me um, as I move on. But it, it, as it was said, I think this is a screaming deal. So. Uh, all right, we, we have a motion on the table. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's unanimous. Thank you. Great. Kari, I signed this Thank pleasure. you, guys. We'll try to get this thing done. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's way out of anything, but we'll try to get this done. But oh. we could run into some of these people to deal with the case of my own, but I, I hope not. Yeah. And Paul, but, thanks for all your work on this. Um, absolutely. We wish you weren't leaving. Thank you, Paul. Larry, can I ask you another question? Sure. Um, in the last, last meeting, you had mentioned um, uh, that, the, uh, that the forestry plan was, was out, of, out of date and needing revisiting, and, and uh, the commission was looking at it's been on the table for a while, frankly, yeah. because there are two competing visions about yes. the sure. Town Forest. Um, and uh, uh, it's been kind of an unspoken consensus that we're going to move a little farther down the road before we reach that point, which, okay. which we all assume would be a recommendation from the commission. And, and having unanimity is what's holding it up. Um, yeah. But then a, a recommendation to you guys with a, with a further understanding or expectation that this would then be on the, 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 the ballot for the town, the citizens of the town, to make a final decision. It, at least if it's to, to move from something that involves a timbering thing to something that involves uh, old growth and regeneration sure. forest. Um, people said at the outset, and I completely agree, this is not something the Conservation Commission should be doing on its own. We're probably in the select board, although I think you have the power to sell it if you want to. Um, no, I, I mean, I think it's a, But it should go to sure. the citizens yeah. to decide. Okay, thank, thank you. you, Larry. All right, Energy Committee. Um, Jordan and I met with uh, John Brabant was there. Who else was there? Larry was there. Okay. And, and about, what would you say, about 12 or 15 people yeah. uh, came to the Maple Corner Community Center. And um, there was, there's a lot of energy to, to form an energy committee. Um, and we talked about what would the mission be. And it seemed to kind of come together around four things. We doing a survey to find out what energy needs might be in the town. Um, to kind of become the purveyors of trusted information in terms of being able to give people information about where you can go to save energy and to save costs. Um, to find ways to educate people. There was talk about having maybe some kind of an energy fair or something to educate people about energy usage and again how to reduce costs and usage and to be available to advise town government about projects that might be, um, uh, first of all, save the town money and energy, and secondly, serve as education tools. The group seemed to be leaning towards not being appointed by us, but being more of a self-appointed advisory group. Um, and they, they talked a lot about the open meeting laws, um, about whether they could be more nimble and quick if they were not an official appointed committee. Um, um, Jordan had asked if there might be funds available, that they might look into funds for helping to make our roads more resilient, and Bill Powell committed to looking into that. Um, Bill is going to call another meeting, at which point I hope the group will again meet to sort of sharpen up, you know, what's, the, what's a more clear mission statement to make a decision about what their structure should be and to talk about how to put that thing together. So that's kind of where we are with it. Okay. Do you want to add anything? Anybody who was there? Um, no, I mean, I think that pretty well summarizes it. I, I think uh, a lot of the conversation was focused on um, you know, charging the committee with coming up with ways to um, uh, 
to structure initiatives and projects in a way that the community will benefit from the creation of those. So whether it's a community funded something that it would be realizing that, that impact back um, if it were um, organizing incentives, that it would be a resource center for residents to come and, and get that information from, you know, from a trusted source, uh, really, to um, try to look at it from the perspective of how do we make Catalyst both a more energy efficient and resilient place, but really try to drive the cost of living down, which, you know, the road maintenance one was just kind of a spaghetti at the wall type situation, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, uh, there have been a couple of recent conversations where we talked about trying to calculate the uh, carbon impact of, of our activity as a, uh, as a town um, that, that performs work. Um, so I think those are really interesting and exciting uh, conversations. So, but Anne's, Anne's right, at, you know, there were a lot of good ideas before they form, form a group and decide on the structure. Um, there is, there's some homework to do on, on how it forms their, Waterbury, I guess, has like an independent um, 501, uh, 501 C3 uh, organization that's independent. So in some ways that restricts the way that they can interact with the town, but at the same time, it also frees them up to you know, self-appoint their own members, and, and it's it's less of a uh, administrative burden, I guess, on the on the town. Um, yeah. Anyway, so they're they're going to look at a couple of different models. Um, there might even be some sort of a hybrid where we have uh, some sort of dedicated individual, like our energy yeah. commissioner, to uh, to be as a li liaison to that kind of conversation if it's more independent. But, but that's the extent of it for him. But I, I understood that they would also be looking at funding opportunities because there would be various pots of money coming available and that are already available and they've helped. That's where it started, that. wasn't it? We That's what kicked it off, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get some of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, next item, Ann Tulin, you're up. Route 14 and Marshfield intersection. What are you doing? Um, Still trying to get information from the key players. Uh, tentative meeting tomorrow at 11:30 with uh, Brennan from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Council folks to do a walkthrough. They're the ones that can do this speed study. Um, trying to get a hold of e trans when we're physically today in their vast office, cubicles, and literally a single person that wasn't one of those I think for. So I reached out to Kevin Gadafi. But it was very busy, but um, I think it's really important to at least know what we are able to work with in. You know, they are redoing uh, Route 14 next year. Um, and I gathered from conversation we had earlier that they were supposed to have some sort of community discussions with folks along the corridor um, as far as what things they would like to see. So you mentioned there's another person who might be looking to see if we can like report on that. You yeah. can. And, um, yeah, I, I just want to ensure once we community members really get together and start talking about things, we're talking about things that are possible and doable. I know with um, such a regional planning that they helped Northfield get a grant for a crosswalk. Um, I know that's something we've talked about by the store because I think they have hopes of being able to use across the street as like a picnic area or seating. So sort of a long-term vision to make that section of town safer and more friendly towards people not getting crushed. So the group is just still talking about So I'm just trying to get you trans on and then because once I know what we can, then we can get together and talk about it. I'm, I'm not one for spinning okay. wheels. Um, and I'll report that the, uh, I got a call from Melanie at the Planning Commission about a week ago. Um, and apparently, Gary Moose had just discovered that in 2025, they're scheduled to pave Route 14 from East Montpelier to Harvard. When they do that, they're supposed to hold community meetings to talk to us about creating walkability, 
is you know, we're dealing with walkability issues and safety. And as far as we know, that never happened. So um, Gary and maybe some other members of the Planning Commission are trying to get hold of DTRANS to find out what's going on, why weren't we consulted, and please will we be. So they'll keep us informed. We may yet have an opportunity to have some input, and that would be a good time to talk about some mm -hmm. of these issues. And that's where we are. That is, yeah. Well, no, because thanks, even the idea of the mirror, you know, thinking it through, is it going to create issues of liability? Is it going to be functional? Is it going to be, which is why, yeah, I've been trying a little bit so far to get a hold of them to be like, this is the things that we're talking about. Give me guidelines so I know what we can and can't do. Okay, thanks. Yeah. John, did you want to? Well, I just put it on your radar. Um, first off, East Coast Village, I believe, is now on the National Historic Fair Register. Am I it correct? Is. It, it yes. is. Yes. It is. Okay, yes. so there might be some uses for that designation in terms of traffic calming and like that, that AOT may not be totally clued in on. And maybe authorities to get these guys to do more than they would otherwise be interested in doing. It's just a guess, but um, I did not know about this public hearing meeting thing that they're supposed to have. So to the extent they're required, and they didn't, they need to be reminded of that and maybe slow things down to the extent that's in our interest. Yeah. I, I know the East Cows Community Trust. There, there are a number of things that the crosswalk was an in interest, and there was discussion over time over the years about sidewalks. Um, and traffic calming. I mean, there are tricks that uh, I always bring up the example of the approach to Danville Village. You know, the, the original plan by OT folks was just to <clears throat> widen and ram through Village Be Damned, and the people literally protested. And they got that beautiful entry now, and they did things. If you drive in, pay attention, they didn't actually narrow the lane width, but visually, you think they did, because they did these tricks with curbing and the painting of the lines where it comes in and appears to constrain and it causes you to follow the speed limit signs more directly and so there are techniques clearly traffic commons would might be an important way to get them to slow down moving yeah. that 35 further down the hill you know so that they're got their foot off the gas not right when they hit that blind corner um, there are things they can do and the town to the extent that the village boundaries are designated by the town on the plan. I don't know where they're designated end to end, but if the town were to expand its village uh, beginning and ends uh, north and south, they get they gain authority in terms of speed control. They can get it down to 25 or lower, um, and then they have more say over these kinds of other techniques. Yeah. Well, hopefully Gary will um, find some people who and talk to them and get us, uh, get that on their radar so that we'll all have a chance to go talk to them. That'd be great. Stay right. tuned. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Dan Bullock. <clears throat> I've often been curious about, about that, that town scenario that seems oddly well defined for, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> for a village of its, uh, of its size. And, and I wonder if that's because they had an opportunity to have more of a voice than there was, particular resurfacing. There was an uprising. Yeah. Literally. They would clean out the green and make it wider instead they got it things slowed down. Right. And there's been a changing of the guard in what used to be called the Pentagon. Now it's the AOT. Yeah. Um, they just it was their way or the highway look literally so um, there's also so I recently uh, learned that there are uh, there's an assigned staff member for Community advocation, uh, uh, advocacy. Ad, yeah, advocacy. Um, um, so I can probably try to get that person, that individual's name. So there's uh, there's one or two, two or three of them I think in AOT. Uh, and their their sole job is to make sure that if there's a process that's being skipped, um, that we can we can bring it up and kind of shape people's attention. That'd be terrific. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can find out who the agitators were in Danville. 
<laughs> and the you come in and invite them in, maybe somebody yeah. come down and provide you some advice where you can kind of shortcut what they go through. Yeah. Well, I suspect they normally would have been doing it last year when they were like everybody else, you know, straight out with the flood. It doesn't uh, give it a bit excuse to skip it, but uh, yeah, I guess it's that. Well, it must have been in the works for a while if they're planning to start in a year. I know. Um, so we should have heard long ago about it. It was originally scheduled for this year, and it was delayed. So you knew the this. Block. You knew yes. this. Oh. Uh, do you have any idea why they didn't go through the public process they're supposed to go through? I don't know for a fact. My understanding is with talking with them that it was announced. I don't know exactly how, uh, yeah. but I don't know for a fact that they yeah. actually put together a, a public meeting on it. That oh, they okay. say that they announced that they were holding one. Mm. <laughs> well, they pissed and they posted yeah, it. So I kind of announced it to you. It probably went out in like one newsletter from. Sure. AOT or something okay. to say, hey, we're holding this meeting in these towns or something. Yeah, um, okay. But. All right, so. well, we'll see what we can do. Thanks. Okay, next up is the um, open meeting law. We received a notice of violation from DOT, who I see is here, um, alleging a violation of the open meeting law in, when we appointed the new DRB members. We, Jordan and I, met with our town attorney. Um, he has drafted a response to that, which I can summarize here, but it's not an official response until we all approve it. So I'm going to summarize it. We'll have a quick discussion about it. If we decide that this is going to be our official response, we will then clean it up, publish it. It should be available, I hope, tomorrow. We'll probably put it on the website and send copies to people who want them. Um, so, in summary, we are going to state that no, there, we find no violation of the open meeting law, and therefore there's no cure necessary except for one thing. And that is we didn't explain our vote when we came out of executive session. <clears throat> um, so we, as the law requires, we intend to cure that tonight right now, and we also intend to look into changing our rules of procedure. We will work with our lawyer to change our rules of procedure to ensure that this doesn't happen again. That is the summary. It's a confidential memo from our attorney, so it's not public right yet, but it, I would like you guys to state whether or not you see anything you'd like to change or whether you'd like to accept this as written. I think it's fine as written. Okay. Okay. In that case, what do we have to do? I guess we have to adopt it? All right. Uh, if yes, I'll, I'll make a motion to, uh, to adopt uh, the response uh, that had been prepared and, and circulated to everybody uh, to be posted online um, as, as soon as possible uh, after this meeting. Uh, within the next couple of days. Yep, and we'll get you copies as soon as we do that. All right. um, so, we have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now, we're going to, right now, take action to cure the violation. And uh, Jordan, would you like to speak to that? Sure. Um, so, as, uh, as Ann noted and, and you read in, uh, uh, in the document that we just uh, uh, adopted, um, the the issue is that um, after coming out of executive session, we uh, we did not um, provide reason, uh, which for that particular article uh, of uh, of the statutes governing uh, the purposes for going into executive session, um, we before taking an action uh, or before the close of a meeting. Um, after taking action, uh, after coming out of executive session, uh, we need to provide a, a reason. So uh, that reasoning was was something that was always our intent to discuss, um, and something a, a dialogue that we were hoping to work through uh, with the uh, with the DRB. Um, uh, but <clears throat> uh, I've.
prepared a, uh, a reason to help remedy that, um, which, uh, which the statute um, kind of envisions um, and try to provide motivation for curing those issues when they can as soon as possible. So I've provided or I've uh, prepared uh, a, a written statement which, uh, which the board members have uh, taken uh, a look at, um, but I am going to as best I can read it into uh, the record uh, because I think it's important and I think the words are important. Um, so as a dyslexic kid, I will make sure I get through this as painlessly as I possibly can. Um, but, uh, but here we go. Um, so it's the desire of this select board to promote the broad, the broad representation uh, of relevant perspectives and experiences when considering qualified candidates for appointments. Appointments will uh, be considered within the greater context of who the select board believes will be best fit to meet the needs of the town and responsive to the, community, uh, to the community's expressed interests. During the regularly scheduled and warned meeting of March 27th, 2024, the select board entered executive session to evaluate and discuss appointments uh, for the development Re uh, review board. While in an executive session, the members of the select board found that Gabrielle Molina has extensive experience assisting clients and community members uh, to interpret, navigate, and engage in public policy. While recently serving as a Cal Select Board member, Gabrielle <clears throat> brought a uh, contemplative and insightful approach to evaluating issues that make uh, and making informed decisions. Uh, one that we all, uh, a position that we that we all greatly appreciated. Janet Ansel, having grown up in uh, the Cal's community, has a long history of representing and supporting uh, the local community and demonstrating a record of leadership within the state legislature. Janet has an eye for the interconnectivity for complex issues and their impacts in lives, uh, on the lives of Vermonters. Scott Bassage, um, uh, his record uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Scott Bassage's record of deeply uh, committed service to Callis is comprehensive, well-organized, and respected. Perhaps most notably, uh, it has been the experience of this select board that Scott, uh, Scott offers a breadth of valuable local context to important decisions. Scott also brings uh, organized, collaborative, and practical approaches to addressing Cal's most immediate challenges and issues. In good consideration of all interested candidates, the select board had determined that appointing these candidates to the open positions of the Cal's Development Review Board would uh, broaden the relative perspective uh, represented on the DRB. It was further agreed that appointing Stephanie Kaplan and Dot Helling uh, to the open alternate positions for the Development Review Board would afford the DRB experienced al alternates should circumstances require. So, <clears throat> if the members of the Select Board find the presentation of this reasoning accurate, I would like to make a motion to ratify the Select Board's March 27th Development Review Board appointments as originally decided. And yeah, yeah, so that would be we'll a motion to. A motion. Yeah. Let's see if there's a second and then we can have discussion if we want. Hmm? I'll second. Okay, and a second. Let's, anybody want to talk about it? Okay, then. Yeah. Shall we vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that was unanimous. Okay. All right, we'll get that, we'll make that public. At this point, I would like to give anybody who would like to, a, a, maybe a minute. We, we seem to have a lot of people here. If you'd like to make a statement. Okay. So I, I'd like to add an additional statement. Um, uh, so the, uh, Issue of transparency has been brought up in a number of side conversations, um, and uh, the members of the Development Review Board um, have uh, expressed a strong interest in trying to um, work through a uh, a joint dialogue um, to 
uh, think about how these appointments uh, get made uh, in the future. Um, I think that that is a very valuable conversation um, to, to work through and one that um, certainly I've had other conversations with other select board members about um, establishing um, expectations on, on who gets considered and, and how that process kind of plays out. Um, uh, and so we are we are pursuing kind of a, a, a way to uh, to set up that that meeting. And, and so far, um, there don't don't seem to be any constraints to doing so. So um, in the very near future, I'd say we should expect to try to schedule uh, a, a joint meeting where we can work through that, that dialogue um, and the idea is that uh, that we try to make that a, a dedicated meeting so that it doesn't uh, have the outside pressure of either group's agenda items for that evening and we can we can tuck into an important conversation um, um, without without bumping up against other meeting meetings because marathon meetings are exhausting, as we all know. So, <laughs> as we're getting used to. As we're getting, as we're getting mm -hmm. disturbingly used to. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, policy committee. Um, Tegan, are you still there? Would you like to walk us through what we did in the policy committee meeting? Uh, uh, I what could, except I'm... Um, I'm currently using my home laptop and not my work laptop, and I don't have the memo I wrote in front of me, so I don't have the details. Okay. Oh, that was your memo. Is that me yes. I wrote the Sure. Okay. So, do so the policy committee has been working for quite some time on a set of financial uh, policy updates. There are four in uh, that are on the docket for approval today. It's the uh, purchasing policy, the credit card policy, the payment policy, and the collection of delinquent taxes policy. The last one, the collection of de delinquent taxes policy, Tegan sort of took the lead on that and worked with Sandra. Um, part of the impetus for getting this done was we wanted to draw on Sandra's knowledge before she left us. So, um, so was, there was that, and then I worked on the other three and brought them to the committee, and then we went through. through in, and I think in all these cases, we looked at the Vermont League of uh, Cities and Towns templates, if those existed. We looked at our practices, and uh, we got input from Sandra and, and others, uh, like Toby. Um, and so the memo summarizes, I won't go through it all, but we looked at, at you know, making it consistent with what we're doing, what makes sense for um, you know, these days and shortening where possible. In particular, I think the delinquent taxes policy was way too long. It was over four pages, and I think we got it down to about two. It was more procedural, I think, and we we're looking at how to make this more consistent with our, our other policies and behave like a true Not policy. to mention it'd be something that people would actually read. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's it right. Down, it down to three, less than three. Yeah. Do you want to add anything to that summary? Uh, no, I don't think so. It was, no, that's, he said it well. Any questions? No, thank you for all the hard work. They're really yeah. clear and well written and comprehensive and we got nothing. Yeah, unfortunately the uh, purchasing policy is not shorter, but there is a big chunk of it is, a, is about um, uh, the bid process and, and mm -hmm. where that matters is if you're going to get any federal funding okay. or certain things that are required. Mm -hmm. as, as this board has been through, right? And first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I will add that in, a, in addition to looking through these for the purpose of updating them, it was nice for select board members and the treasurer and the clerk to sit down and read all these through thoroughly and just talk about them since we're all still learning these processes. Uh, so I, I thought it was a really valuable experience. Agreed. It, it was, I mean, it was good for us to, to just see all the things that you guys need to guide you in the work that you do. I mean, I had no idea it was that complicated until we started digging into these. Um, all right, what do we need? Uh, we need to adopt these policies. 
Does anybody have any questions? We're talking about adopting the purchasing policy as written, the credit card policy, the payment policy, and the link with tax policy. The financial and banking policy we're going to- Leave as is for now. As leave as is, okay. So does everybody understand what's needed? Does somebody like to make a motion? So moved. <laughs> okay. I assume Rose has got all of that. Well, I think they're listed, yeah, they're listed in bullet number two on the agenda, so I think Rose has that. So the motion is to adopt those four policies. I'll second. And two and seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That is the culmination for some of us of uh, months, <laughs> months of work. <laughs> Oh, as part of this also, sorry, there are more under this agenda item. Um, we did adopt a personnel policy, and it turns out that one person <laughs> had accrued a lot of extra leave that under the policy she would lose. Um, so she requested that uh, we review that. Um, it's 44 days, is that right? Well, okay. it's, it, I have a total of 44 days accrued and now there's a new 30-day cap, and there's so I would lose 14 days, which is essentially three weeks of work, of accrued vacation leave. Okay. Um, Barbara and I talked about this a little bit. I'd like to recommend that we allow Barbara to use those 14 days, uh, provided that she uses them by, uh, Tegan pointed out that the, the year that you accrue these things is a calendar year, so let's say December, 31st, um, 2026, which gives you a little over two years. Actually, it gives you two and a half years. Two years. <laughs> Discussion? I support that. I think okay. that's a totally fair and, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we need to vote on that? I suppose we do. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's an exception to the policy. So. Okay. Will somebody move that? Uh, yep. So I had made a motion <laughs> to... <laughs> Donnie, you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> you got the words here, bud? I don't know. All right, fine. Uh, make a motion uh, to uh, uh, make an, uh, an exception uh, to the... Uh, personnel policy to uh, accommodate uh, Barbara's accrued uh, vacation days, uh, the extra 14 days of vacation, um, with the understanding that she'll commit to trying to use those uh, before, uh, before um, uh, December 31st, 2026. Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> All in favor? What, before oh, we. Vote. Was there also a few sick leave days? I don't know how you accrue those because you have to be sick. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm. I, I actually used two of them last week, okay. so I'm. I'm almost even okay. there. So I don't think that. Okay. I think it's become a non-issue. Okay. Thank I you. I just want to make sure. Okay. We ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next item. Um, Ann Tulin and I <clears throat> attended the last meeting of the East Cal of the East Montpelier Fire Department um, and brought up the issue again that I think you've all heard me rail about in the past of uh, the interlocal agreement. <clears throat> so I wrote a memo for you um, outlining the history of what happened, and I think I don't know how it happened, but it looks like the issue of when you terminate an agreement as opposed to when you might decide to amend the agreement got mushed into one thing that, as uh, far as I can see, doesn't work for either one. It now says that if you want to just terminate the agreement, you can give them three months' notice. Um, that seems not like something we want. So I would like to propose that we propose to the other two parties that we go back to the initial language about when you terminate the agreement. So you, that would be, you can terminate it at the end of every five year term of contract, and you have to give at least one year's notice before the end. <clears throat> and then I would like to spell out a different way for if you want to amend the agreement. 
And I'm throwing out some language here for people to discuss. And that would be that anytime you want to change it, you send a notice to the East Montpelier Fire Department um, at least one month, or to all the parties, sorry, at least one month before uh, the next meeting. And they put it on the agenda, we talk about it. <clears throat> and uh, it would take, of course, all three parties to agree to an amendment. So would this be putting it on the next meeting like within a month or the meeting following that meeting? No, they would, when, it's the meeting following receipt of it, unless you only give it to them a day or two before the meeting, or, or less than a month before the meeting. Okay, so if they have a month out. Everybody has, everybody has a chance to go to their boards and talk about it. Okay. It doesn't mean that they have to act on it at the next meeting, but at least they have to talk about it. <laughs> They could table it, they could do a study, they could do whatever they want, but at least they'd have to talk about it, okay. start the process. They want, want, might want more lead time, but I think it's a starting point. Yeah, I, th that's right. I just wanted to offer this language and yeah. hope that they'll put it on the next agenda and we'll just talk about it. Um, so I was prepared to just put it in as, as me, and that's how I've written this, but it occurred to me that maybe you guys would actually like to review this first. And we could offer it as a council select board um, suggestion, if you like. What do you guys think? I think it's okay to propose it. I think that they're probably going to want more than a month because oh, that's the fine. wheels that's of everything fine. move slowly. I don't have um, a problem with that. And they certainly want, the fire department about say they don't want to be pigeonholed into a corner yeah. or something, so. Yeah, I, would you like me to change it to um, a month on this draft? I mean, two months on this draft? Well, maybe if you gave them 60 days, because that would certainly be okay. enough time to fit it into a meeting okay. or discuss with their boards. Good. Okay, yeah. okay. Two months, I can do that. Others have thoughts, ideas? Um. Um. No, I don't. I don't have any. I, I, I mean, I think it's 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 language that's um, that's that's worth kind of uh, cleaning up. I think <clears throat> it can be kind of a distraction uh, to to dialogue sometimes when we get kind of caught up in in it. But I think there's just there's a lingering challenge that. We don't tend to get the information out of them before the meetings that, that we feel like we want. And I guess I'm feeling a, a little bit um, powerless is the only thing that uh, we don't have. We don't have very many mechanisms <laughs> for, for saying, hey, we're not really happy uh, with, uh, with this. And, and I know that, uh, that they're working with a lot. Um, and trying to work through an a administrative load, much like we are. Um, but I say that without having any particular uh, recommendation. You know, I think Woodbury has demonstrated uh, a lot more effort in, in kind of communicating that stuff up, up front um, as, and, and giving us useful information when, when we need it in advance. And, and I feel like we're not really getting that as well as yeah. from. Pillars, I'd so. be willing to reach out to them, and I think it's just them um, still. I get the impression of finding their footing with the changeover, um, but I'd be willing to talk to them about how we can try to get stuff a little sooner. Yeah. I don't know that they necessarily get stuff sooner, but they also want to have a lot of notice, so it would be equitable for them to give us sufficient notice of things happening yeah. yeah. sooner. So. <laughs> It's yeah. reciprocal, that's fair. Okay, Barbara. So are you talking about getting information in advance of the quarterly meetings? Because well, I, only three times a year. Well, they still call them quarterly meetings. Oh, they don't? Yeah, <laughs> I think they're quarterly, but they still call them quarterly. But is that what you're talking about? Because yes. I do reach out to Paul two weeks before those meetings and start asking for all that material. And you will see that last time he never got it to us, which was not good. And, excuse me, in January, he never got it to us. And last week, he got it to us just a couple of days, but I kept having to hound him and hound him. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, you're welcome to also contact him, but just so you know, I do that starting two weeks each time before those meetings are scheduled. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and J 
James knows I do it too because I email him, but he gets he gets them to me. As soon as I can. <laughs> but in sorry, John, I mean, no, no, go no, ahead. No, 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 you were talking. All right. Uh, just in East Montpelier's defense, they have a different structure than Woodbury does. Uh, we're completely run by our membership. They have a board of uh, trustees, operators. I don't know what the proper terminology is for that, but they're operated by a board, not by their members. We are completely operated by our members, so it's a little easier for me to compile all of our stuff. Um, in my opinion, uh, I have worked with organizations that have boards, and sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not. Uh, just in their defense, and to agree with uh, Ann Tulin, they are still trying to better find their feet with their changing of the guard as drastically as they've had. All of their leadership positions have changed whether it's ambulance or fire. So they are trying to turn things around for the better. But I understand where you guys are coming from as well. Um, oh, sorry, John. Yeah. Just if I may make a suggestion, um, it shouldn't be a big deal, um, that anytime there's a significant policy issue or purchase matter that is to be brought up, that it's brought up to both, it's brought to both select boards, in time with one another, because one of the struggles that became divisive um, was there would be a negotiation with the select board of East Montpelier on, say, a $600,000, $700,000 fire truck. And then when we have our joint meeting, Jenna had to purchase a fire truck, his cow sign on, and it had been all this conversation for months, mm -hmm. or at least very many weeks. And then the first we knew about it was a contract with the forest to purchase $750,000 implement. And then, of course, you know, I got my back up. When did you find out about it? And, you know, and so I know in one case we said no to the person. That was actually a good decision. They found a used one with, I don't know, 2,000 miles on it, not even from Chicago, that met the need, and it saved us you know, $400,000. Um, but that just, I think if you just had a clause, I don't know if it would be in there, or some kind of an agreement that email goes to chair of East Montpelier about the notion they had, so two cows. Okay. That's no, all. I don't, I don't think that would be appropriate for in here, but. Yeah, but in here, yeah. discussions. Yeah. yeah. But so, immediate, would you like me to present this as just my draft, or do you want to say this is from coming from the board? What do you guys want to do? I don't know. I mean, I'm. <clears throat> I'm comfortable saying that, that, that it's a uh, uh, re proposed revision from the board and yeah. uh, authorize right. you to present okay. it as such. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. And I'll, I'll send it off to um, the East Montpelier Board and the East Montpelier Fire Department. Well, we got to vote on it first. Man. Do we have to vote? I mean, it's uh, just all it is. We're authorizing you to do it. But anyway. Fine. I'll make a motion, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. <laughs> I mean, I'll second Donnie's motion. <laughs> Donnie has moved that they authorize me to send this to the, this draft to the two boards with the change that Ann Tulin made, and Jordan seconded. All in favor? All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, financial report. Carl. Right. So, yeah, we've been watching very closely the uh, budget to actual reports for the general fund and highway, um, and also our cash situation. And um, as far as the budget goes, I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable. still getting used to the timing of things. It, it, there, you know, there was a big concentration of expense in the middle of the year. Um, but three quarters of the way through the year, we were at 95% of revenue combining the two budgets and 84% of total expenditures. Uh, so that, that feels pretty reasonably, I can tell things have slowed down where the gravel spending has come down quite a bit since January. It was a really high topic. Um, the cash continues to be tight and we are waiting on the state to disperse the um, Moscow Woods, um, the federal portion of the Moscow Woods FEMA reimbursement which is a big number, it's about $250,000. And at the same time, we're waiting any moment now, we should be getting the final uh, state education, what's called a true up, it's the final um, adjustment for what is you know, the balance of our 
um, our tax responsibility to the school district. And that's also going to be in a neighborhood of around $250,000. So those are big numbers. So it'd be nice and we're waiting. <laughs> we're going to check every day. <laughs> and um, so it's a little nerve wracking. Um, but I, I think we'll be okay. I mean, if we need to, we can always draw on the, on the line of credit. I really prefer not to. Um, and then according to Toby, we, the FEMA, uh, the federal, at the federal level, we've been approved for the Bliss Pond Road project, which is a big one, and one other of the big ones, I think it might be Singleton, but, but now it's in the state process, and I take it that they're a little backed up at this point, because the first reimbursement for the Bruce Pond Dam went through pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and this, the second one, the Moscow Woods, is taking some time. So, just watching very closely. Uh, two questions. Yes. Um, in the uh, general ledger uh, review uh, where we've got all of the projects listed under uh, grant revenues, uh, the budget is, is zero uh, and, and actual I would expect to be zero, but uh, would those, should would those have... Can you say more precisely what you're looking at? Are you looking at the balance sheet? Uh, or the budget? Budget. The general fund budget? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is the highway budget status report. The highway budget, okay. Um, and under revenues, uh, the individual projects have zeros for the budget. Would, would it be appropriate to put in what those project expenses have been or what we've... What we've well, if there are any expenses, they show up down below in the expense uh, uh, I see. section. Right. And you will see them on page three. Yep. yep. I mean, grant expenses. Yep. Um, there, and you can see that they're all zeros there as well. So that the the way the budget is incorporated into this is you literally take what the town voted on and put it in line by line. I'm told it's a very tedious project. It's on my list. Um, Sandra showed me how to do it, but I. I that's that's how it's done. You don't make any um, changes from that, and so you have to accept the level of detail that was approved. Mm. So if you didn't approve, you know, individual line item um, revenue for these different projects, you don't put it into the into Nemric that way. Mm. Now there may be now you could ask me to put together a spreadsheet, but I don't, I don't know if that'd be worth. No, no, that that's fine. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, and then I guess the second question uh, was actually related to Singleton Road, and I wonder if there is the uh, the right of way paperwork had been completed. Um, that you that mentioned that recently. I, I think it has been completed, but I don't have it. Okay. So let me let me find out what's going on with that. Yeah, the property owner is just kind of curious where that where okay. that stood. Okay. He mentioned that recently, and I want to say that it's done, but I don't, I don't have it. Okay. That was sort of shifting of the stream a little bit. Yeah. Other questions for Kari? Well, congratulations, Kari, your first financial report. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Can I just ask yeah. One sort of personal question. Did you say that there's a, a project for doing work on the Bliss Pond Road? This is for the flood recovery work from last year. Oh, okay, so the work is for, it's all Yeah, been so okay. all the work has been done, it's all been paid for by the town, now we're looking to get reimbursed. And it's about $1.4 million, and we received 25000 of it. I just misunderstood it very selfishly. I thought, great, that one road. Road. My road. <laughs> What's that? that one road was a million bucks. No, this is all, oh, all so the bad. roads together. <laughs> Whoa. I don't remember what Bliss Pond was. <laughs> Two heart attacks today. Bliss Pond was expensive. It was the it was out like maybe the third most expensive yeah, it after was Moscow Woods and Singleton. Completely decimated at the bottom. It was pretty horrible. <laughs> so was Adam and other places. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Thank you, Jamie Curtis Pond. Yeah. So. The things I was hoping we'd be ready to actually vote on tonight were not ready. Um, like with everything in this project, it's all slower than anybody hopes. But 
We are still on track to start construction June 1st. Um, Larry Hebert, the contractor, and Michael, uh, the engineer, met on Friday. Um, and I have not heard the final report from that, but their plan going into the meeting was that that would be the meeting at which they completely finalized um, the details. And so by the middle of this week, uh, we should get final numbers from Larry. They were still going back and forth with dam safety on some details of, of rebar quantity and uh, positioning that could affect the final price just a little bit. Um, so certainly by our next meeting, hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have the final construction price from Larry. Um, I would anticipate the, and that's the only piece that he's waiting for to finalize the contract and draft it's looking like for us. It'll be low enough to pay for the extra engineering costs. Is that right? So it'll balance. That's separate. So the other piece of this is the construction oversight. That's the construction oh, cost. Yeah. The construction oversight is the engineering, um, and that they had initially given us a contract, draft contract, that was 97000 um, and they were able to drop that to 82000 and that savings counters the, the 16000 we went over in the bid phase. Um, so we're still on track to be within the 150000 we budgeted for total engineering costs. Um, the last number I saw from Larry, I believe, was was it nine seventy two? It was just shy of a million dollars on construction, um, and it's sounding like that could shift a tiny bit, but it should not be <coughs> substantial. Um, and so all of that should be ready for the next meeting. The the other contract we were hoping to sign tonight was with the, um, Bob Thompson of the USDA, which is that, I think I mentioned it briefly at the last meeting, it's this other completely unrelated track that we've been following to rebuild the dam that would be largely paid for, I think, 70% by federal money. Um, but it's an eight to 10 year process. We're two years into an eight to 10 year process. Um, and so we've always viewed that as a worst case scenario. Um, but I had a meeting with the folks at the USDA who we've been working with, and they strongly recommended we start the next phase of the process, even though we don't think we're gonna need it just to keep the ball rolling. Um, and that is a, some type of a economic impact study, I think. Um, but it's fully funded by them. There's no matching funds. We don't have to do anything. Kari and I met last week and filled out a couple of required forms. Um, and he was supposed to get me the final contract by today, but didn't. So that'll be next time too. Um, yeah, I think... No, no progress with uh, Bernie's office on... Um, no, it's, um, we've played a little bit of phone tag, so I haven't actually had a phone or conversation with them, but, um, the general response I'm getting from them and so both folks I've been talking to is the FEMA process is the FEMA process. The issue for those who don't know, we got um, a federal earmark for $525,000 for the Curtis Pond Dam in the federal budget that passed two, three weeks ago. Um, and so the way that works is the federal government directs, gives the money to FEMA and directs FEMA to spend that money on the Curtis Pond Dam Rehab Project. Um, unfortunately, FEMA's policy 
is to not fund any projects that they don't approve before the project starts. And they do not start approving their projects for this year's funding until September. So we would need some type of a, somebody in a high place to you know, get us a waiver from that FEMA policy. Um, Come on, Bernie. Right? Um, so I, there's a few different... Um, Where does a half a million dollars go if it doesn't get approved, but it was approved? It just disappears into the, in the air. <laughs> I know, it's so frustrating. It really um, is. But I'm, I'm in talks with people in Bernie's office to see if they can um, put some pressure on. Uh, Mark Mahali is in talks with um, the governor's main FEMA person. I think they're meeting sometime this week um, to see if there's a way to go in that direction. So there's efforts being made to to find a way to use that money, but no idea if it's gonna work out or not. Um, but in terms of the project, you know, I think we're on track to do it this year anyway. Um, the, the big difference is if we, if we don't get this Bernie money, the CPA, is, CPA members are taking out a $200,000 loan, um, which we'll have to continue fundraising for the next three years to pay back. But the CPA is committed to that. So is is the loan from the CPA going to cover the overage from your initial bond, voter approved bond amount? Yes. Like yeah. So the I don't um, our treasurer is away this week and next, so I don't have final like up to today numbers right now. But um, I think it will. We had the bond was four fifty. The ARPA was 100. What was it? ARPA was 100. Oh, okay. Um, the fundraising. And then you your fund fundraising was 280. Was, well, initially, it's okay. now, yeah, it's it's like now for something. Oh, for oh. something. Wow. Yeah. So, what? So the, the current budget for the project is 1.2 million. And uh, we are within a few thousand dollars of having a million in hand. Um, and then the plan is to borrow 200,000. Um, and there's, we'll raise a little bit more if we have to raise a little bit so more. So more or less the same design as originally done? Or are you guys it's been redesigned pretty heavily. Um, same concept, it'll be the same look. Mm -hmm. um, but but some of the mechanisms are, are changed. All right. Wow, good job. Amazing. It's going to happen. Wrap it out of the hat again, Jamie. Plus, there, is there any way to keep going through with the FEMA, FEMA process and so that we can then, re if they do approve it, we can still get the funding so that that can be stuck into an account that pays off the bonds? So my initial conversation, so the, the FEMA money comes through the BRIC program, which I forget what that stands for, but it's a part of FEMA, something, yeah. Um, and so the person I talked to there, Stephanie Smith, um, was fairly clear in our, uh, in the email she sent back um, that the, the money can't be put to a project that starts before FEMA approves it. Um, How many FEMA projects need? <laughs> right, so Bernie's office researched the last couple of years that have been funded through this mechanism and there haven't been any recent projects that got Wait a minute, what about Woodbury? Didn't I know. You guys, this is what I was about yeah. to say. <laughs> so we also got an earmark from yeah. Bernie Sanders office for 1.1 1 .1, um, that is being held through the same, it's the same exact funding 
uh, and we were told the same thing. We cannot use the money to pay off the loan we have for our new building. We cannot use the money for this part of the project whatsoever because we already have funding secured. This is what we were told at the department. I don't know if uh, the Curtis Pond Association is being told the same thing. I'm sure, sure we could lose the money regular. if we had to lose the money. However. Yeah. But y'all have additional things, don't you, that you can use it for? Right. Yeah. So if you wanted to use it specifically for the dam project, you would have to completely stop your project, uh, remove it from, if you were to ask for future funding out of uh, town meeting day, and literally start all over, the process entirely over from square one. That's what they told us if we wanted to do that. Uh, however, they told us to come up with alternative projects to present to them so we can still get the money. So in our situation, uh, we are currently going to be split between two buildings. So we are in the process of getting a design for an addition that is going to be a completely separate project. And Stephanie, who we're also working with, told us that that will most likely be able to be funded from the earmark that we got through Bernie Sanders' office. So I don't know if the Curtis Pond Association has other projects you guys want to tackle in the future, like you've stuff on the back. Right? Well, uh, there has to be specific to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be permitted to replace Number 10 pond, because we can't let it go. But how much was the dock? The dock was 5000 Five or six, I think. I mean, maybe the dock, and then we could take that money from our budget and put it toward it. I mean, I can certainly, I'll like explore that. that more with her. I have started a conversation with um, the engineers about if there's a way we can split yeah. off part of the project and put it off till the next year and call it a separate project. Um, they said that damn safety frowns on that <laughs> splitting seasons. <laughs> uh -huh. It's all within the same piece of property. A lot of frowning frowning here like that. It's yeah. all in the same area. Yeah. Are, are there any uh, improvements that could happen in the swimming area, on the beach, the island, the inlet? Any other improvements that could qualify so, for this? Right. That, that would be my suggestion. Is yeah. to just talk about alternative like other projects you guys as an association want to have done, where you've talked about doing but you just didn't have the funding, and then take those ideas and present them to Stephanie and be like, well, if we can't use it for this, is it possible that we could possibly use it for this project? Yeah, that's so Just that way, because you've already been awarded the earmark, you just have to find a way that they say, yes, we will fund right. this. So at least it would keep the door open. Well, let me be clear, is the money for you or is it to the town? It's to the town, but it's specifically for the Curtis Pond Dam. Mm -hmm. Oh, well that makes it hard to switch um, it to a dam. But, but it might, but it, it might be, yeah, I don't know. Is, I'll it, spe is that. it specifically Curtis Pond Dam or just Curtis Pond? I believe it's the project title is the Curtis There's Pond no Dam Rehabilitation so Project. If we put a new um, town garage adjacent to <laughs> <laughs> I'm but I'll explore that. <laughs> Damn monitoring. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's well, there was a conversation at center. town meeting about um, accessibility of the Curtis Pond swim area. Yeah. And so we have done some looking at, um, there's a little lower area that could be a parking area um, with a more level boardwalk to the beach. Setting up an accessible fishing yeah. spot where someone would be able to access it. Replace Don Marcus's asparagus garden. Right. Well, I, I wonder if there's like some shoreline rehabilita rehabilitation and restoration. You know, the invasive species work. Um, yeah. That was was kind of a big was a big thing that uh, that the conservation commission and association members were going to facilitate as a way of keeping the cost down and I'm wondering you know I'm wondering if some of the you know is there road work that can be done uh, like with the culvert that's in there that's right there I, I don't know what kind of condition it seems like it's a pretty good condition considering how much hammering it took um, yeah. but yeah I don't know that uh, scoping that, that that's been scoped at all um, for 
any work um, or any of the road going up kind of right. the, the Worcester Road yeah, the hill, and whether yeah. or not that that could be adjacent enough, you know, right. to be yeah. considered. I mean, if the, if the dam is going to be, or if the water is going to be lowered, it seems like it would be a good time to schedule work on that road uh, with the water line down in a way that does some pretty significant, or helps mitigate some pretty significant stormwater work. So yeah. it would be a good time to re reconstruct that road. Yeah. Well, it sounds like we've got some ideas to explore. Yeah, I'll, I'll right. reach back out and mm. see how much flexibility there is. Camp road there. That's private land. Hill. It's all private land. Was that Father Gill? Uh, it that was mean? originally. Now it's um, the Blue Barn Cooperative. They own that. They own that section. So I know that like the, there's that there's the section of the Worcester Road that washed out obviously really pretty badly around uh, right, right by yeah. Pats and, mm -hmm. um, and then was running through front yards and um, down through the fishing access. I wonder if reconstruction of that segment of road um, to mm -hmm. one, mitigate personal property damage for stormwater runoff from the road, um, but also mitigate Water, water, uh, or you know, stormwater infiltration into the uh, in, into the pond yeah. without it going into collection area or some sort of offshoot. I'm notorious for scope creep, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come up with a list. It's fine to spend five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and well, and yeah. fix roads, right? Win win. <laughs> Okay, I guess uh, there's no, we're not going to do any action under that tonight. No. Okay. So, uh, swing me. Didn't we appoint Tracy Sutton? I feel like we did. Okay. Okay, I guess we didn't. We believe we appointed somebody. Uh, all right, well, uh, there's two. I thought we only needed one. I thought we had Adrian and Daniel. Yes, but they want two. They want two more, so the committee would now be four members. That's correct. Okay. Would somebody like to move the appointment of those two? So um, moved. <laughs> Diane moves the appointment of Tracy and Linda to the swim committee. Is there a second? Second. Do you need to specify their terms? Oh, Rose will get it off. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh, Rose, it's Tracy for a one-year term and Linda for a two-year term. So, but you'll see it on the agenda. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. <coughs> Donnie seconded. Uh, Jamie second. I moved. <laughs> All in favor? I got, I got two of us. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And you volunteered to Fire Fire. It's a surprisingly easy grant that, that, okay, so the gist of it is they will fund projects, but what they want to see is um, if it's something we can make sustainable. So, of course, our overarching goal is to keep people from chucking tires on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, we can apply for funding to do whatever we want to call it, uh, effort to try to pull in as many tires, the kind that people bring in their bags from the garage that they say they found on the side of the road and whatnot. Um, I was thinking that perhaps charging a nominal, like a $2, I think it's more like $8 now to dispose of a tire, charge a, a fraction of it to encourage people to bring them in. That could be banked for the next year for Green Up Day. That could go towards tire removal. Um, might be a way to demonstrate sustainability in addition to um, having ongoing programming, messaging about please don't dump stuff on this side of the road, including tires. Uh, I think we would need to if we were going to have a specific day in which the tires would go out, it might not be a bad idea to have windows of time where people could bring tires to the location, possibly the dump, like during a week from Monday to Friday, if we could recruit some of our old flagging volunteers or something, people that can kind of check off, they got this many, that many, whatever, um, and do our best to discourage people dumping there when no one's there to receive them. I think you guys were reluctant to have it down at the garage because they're already kind of squeezed for space. Uh, and then the guys can bring it to Casella's on the 
by the ton as opposed to by the tire, which is a better Are you price. This would be a once a year thing? Or? No, so they want to fund projects that are, in theory, a step towards sustainability. So if our goal is to keep tires off the road, this is a, a step to get a large number of tires that people may have piled up or whatever, you know, just try to get a lot of the extraneous waste tires in town out of here. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps by charging a nominal fee that is reasonable, that could be banked for next year. So we'll be at Green Up Day, we'll have a pot of money and in but theory it, have fewer tires to do it well, again. It would happen one time a year, is that? What yes, one time a year that? too. And, and that, you know, it's unfortunate that this grant doesn't partner up real well with Green Up Day, because I'm sure people are already chucking stuff over the sides of the road. <gasps> but, Although I haven't heard too much from, you know, my neighbors usually tell me every single thing they find that I do hear there's a mattress over on Peking Brook. But, so that's kind of how they want it written, that you're tapping into volunteers, that you have a plan to make it something that can carry on in the years to follow, mm -hmm. you know, so building up a small pot of money um, to be able to do it in the future. But I'm open to any suggestions while I... Any suggestions there? No. Nope. <laughs> 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 oh, Ronnie, James, thoughts, tires? No. So, so <laughs> this. <laughs> there's a lot of them. So this is a completely separate grant than the grant we apply for every year. From, this is not a green update. Uh, green no, green. this is a. They can help with. You can apply for grants to start um, food scrap collection and have a community food scrap drop off at so-and-so's farm, or um, there's different kinds of things you can use, but of course, you know, we, after last summer's giant haul and moving wall out of the garage, tires was kind of present. Great, the, I think that's great. Um, yeah. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do it every year, basically. Right. So do it, and, and the hope is they're gonna base funding on what are our plans to keep it moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I wonder if part of the plan of moving it forward is coordinating it with Green Up Day in some way, because we get um, up to $400 in grant funding every year uh, from Central Vermont Solid Waste for Green Up Day trash. Um, and I don't know, it's always the office that, or it used to be Alfie, and then the office that submits the receipts so I don't actually know how much we spend in Green Up Day trash removal, but if we're averaging, you know, say $2,000 a year or something, then that would be extra funds that we could coordinate a Green Up Day tire mm -hmm. drive. and Because we'll suddenly get some on the 5th or the 4th whenever we have it, and I think hold on, because that's a separate thing for them to do, but... Um, but right. then have, yeah, specific, really try to go to your garage, you know, if we want to take X number per household, yeah. especially people are willing to kick in a couple bucks a tire, we could get a lot of them out of the community that might end up on the side of the road and um, also get some money towards continuing. How does that work with, on Green Up Day, uh, I often find a tire or two on the side of the road and bring them to Green Up. Yeah. Yes, so and do that. I don't have to pay for those. No, 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 no. So that would be that would be the usual, you know, way that we do it. But then, to be proactive, July or we could pick whatever, you know, say, hey, this is what we're going to do. You know, we really want to try to reduce how many tires end up chucked over. You know, because the ultimate goal is not to have two, three weeks out from Green Up Day all of a sudden they're popping up at the bottom of Peck Hill, and they're probably, there's always the same spots that there's just tires just left on the side of the road every single year, so. Right, um, I mean, it's too late for to this year, that. but what I'm saying is long yeah. term, that, we that day it could right. be Green Up Day. Mm -hmm. And that we do about the same that time. That we do them at the same that time. That would be my plan for moving forward, yeah. Exactly. So, Anne, are you gonna write something up and give it, and show it to us? I can send it to you via email. I wanted to make sure that you all were on board with that. Um, so, it's a very simple. Sounds good. It's well, a really simple grant thing. I can send it to you tomorrow. When do you have to apply? It's at the 29th, I think. So I can't wait till next meeting. Okay. I, I just would have been, you, never mind. 
<laughs> yeah, why don't you send it to all of us so we can take it? I will do that. Yeah. Yes. And do you need any action from us? No. Are we applying as a town? I think we're applying as a town. Yes, yeah, so, I'd, sorry. Make, I, so I'd, make a, I'd make a motion to authorize Ann to apply for the, uh, for the grant. Um, I don't know how else to, yeah. to, to say it. As described. As described. <laughs> as no, as I certainly as tomorrow. described. I just wanted to make sure that was everyone was cool with that vision. And then it, it's really quite as simple. I was oh, just want to make sure I hit all the pieces that they wanted to see. Um, so that it would be a good report. So uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Donnie seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, Ian. Okay. Thank for tomorrow. Yeah. No. Uh, excuse me, I need to get out of your hair. Could I, just a second, to mention something that I forgot about when sure. we were talking about the, the town parks. Uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with it, how much time you've spent wandering in there and getting lost. Some of you probably quite a bit. But anyway, this coming Saturday, uh, I'm sponsoring a discovery walk in there for the uh, Friends of Callus. They have a monthly program. And I would love to have you come along if you'd be interested. It's 9.30 Park at the Old West Church. And we're not going to be able to go all the trails, but we're going to try to hit the most interesting things. So, anyway, nice to you. Thanks, What time is that? 9.30. Okay. Um, it should be on Front Porch Forum. Again, right. there was a thing, but. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, 9.30. Saturday. Old West Church. Don't park by the entrance to the, uh, to the trail. Okay, now we come to reports, and I wonder if, before we hear from the others, James, would you like to tell us anything about what's going on with the Woodbury Fire Department? Is there anything to report? Not much. Um, you don't have to I, no, 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 no. I mean, so uh, in March of every year, we have our annual meeting where we elect our positions. Um, I was reelected as the president. The vice president is Retta Dunlap. She's been a community member of Woodbury longer than I've been alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, I just wanted to say that too. <laughs> right? uh, our treasurer is the same person, Hannah Morris. Um, our chief is still Paul Cerruti. Um, now that we have done that, I will uh, finalize our contract and get it to you guys. I realized that last year, it looks like we signed it in April, and I didn't realize that, so I apologize that we did it in May. Uh, so I will get that to you for the next meeting. Um, we are still moving along on our building project, and like I already said, we got an earmark from Bernie's office as well. Uh, unfortunately, we can't use it for the building itself, we have to use it for a separate project. Um, but we are doing everything we can to figure out how we can use this money since we were able to get it, and it's not a small amount of money. Um, it's more or less where we are. I mean, the building affects everybody, but the town of Cal's isn't paying for it. But mm -hmm. uh, so it's more or less where we are. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for James? No, Sorry, I missed your last meeting. I intended to go, but I'm no. Did you, did you I did not. I think it falls at the same time as emergency planning. So I think so I have to. Yes, it does. Yeah. Too many too many. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> so I'm going to have to yeah, alternate because they have the money. Uh, Tegan, are you still there? No. Okay, no. I guess Tegan's not going to report. I can, I can give us a few updates if you'd like. Sure. Okay. So uh, ballots are going out and coming in for the May 7th school budget revote. Uh, there seems to be a lot of interaction with community members about that, so that's great. Uh, April through July is like the one slow period we have at the town office. That's the, our slowest time. It really starts to pick up in August again. And so I had suggested to Kari and Tegan uh, several weeks ago that I back off on my hours during these few months uh, to help with payroll. So I have reduced my hours from 40 to 32 hours a week, which still qualifies me as full time but try to help out with payroll for right now for a while. And that seems to be working fine. From my perspective, it is. Um, the Tegan and I have met with the inclusion work group twice now. This is in follow-up to the Declaration of Inclusion. Um, I have recruited five 
people to that group and we've met with them twice and we're getting ready to open it up to more community members who might be interested so we're really happy with how that's moving along and then um, every April is typically the deadline for the listers to lodge the grand list with the state of Vermont they have needed to ask for an extension so I don't know what their schedule is going to be but that greatly affects the town. We need that before we can start preparing tax bills and so forth. So hopefully we'll be hearing from the listers soon what their schedule is on that because that was actually due to be um, lodged on April the 1st. So they've, they, I don't believe they have filed their extension yet from what I understood from John today. He said they will be filing an extension. So hopefully that will happen soon. It's the same process we went through last year. Is that right? Every year. Yeah. Every, April 1st is the, is the deadline. The phrase I've always heard at the town office is that the grand list is frozen as of April 1st. But it's not there yet. So they're working on it. Questions for Barbara? Right. No, thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Carrie, you got anything? Yeah, I was going to share a little bit. So the, the Milton Cat delivered the new road grader today. It's kind of a surprising thing that uh, we won't pay for it until August, but they're turning it over ownership to us now. Um, we will apply for a bond next month, and that the rough estimate is August 1st is when that one will come in. Wow, so they can actually start using it now. Yeah, okay. yeah I was able to get uh, insurance today as well. So it all happens very quickly. So that's good. Um, and then other items, just I thought I'd give you a little peek into my schedule, my to-do list. So other things that I've got scheduled or in the urgent category this week, um, all follow-ups from this meeting, including hopefully going to be onboarding a couple new employees. We'll talk about that in a minute. And what's involved with that is a whole bunch of paperwork, getting them into our payroll system, enroll them in benefits if that's appropriate, uh, orientation, and also need to update um, our uniform levels, because uh, we've had now have two employees leave, and I just, we need to sort all that out. Um, and then tomorrow morning, um, our insurance company, Passive, will be doing building inspections. So we're gonna be at the three buildings in the morning <coughs> with the adjuster, um, we've got at 11.30 the, um, the East Callis site visit for the um, 14. Um, I'm going to meet our new FEMA coordinator on Thursday, a new person has been assigned to us. Uh, also on Thursday there's our webinar on changes to the unemployment insurance policy. And then Friday Toby and I are meeting with the AMT about the, um, next year's highway budget. I guess it's going to be all, uh, Thing that happens. Um, Going to be working on ARPA reporting. We were actually so remember every year you report on your spending, and um, we were actually able to file the report today. Gabriel and I and Katie Buckley from the LCT. Oh, you got in then. We did get in. Um, unfortunately, we learned in that meeting that it is not appropriate to use ARPA money for reserve funds and the last three allocations that we made were reserve funds so we're going to have to redo those. We thought we were so clever. Oh. <laughs> so we thought we were done with, with our level. But we have to do them by the end of this month and this is our last meeting. No, it's okay. We have, we have, we, we, no. Uh, we're just going to have to report again next year. So we, you'll tell us we'll, what yeah, we'll work it all are out. We'll work it out. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, and then closing out a, the April financial period, a bunch of adjustments that happen at the end of the at end of the month. I really want to contact the school about the tax payment because they gave us a nudge last week, and I told them this is our situation. We're waiting for um, the state report, and I also want to contact the state about this FEMA reimbursement. Say, hey, where is where is that money? Um, we have a variety of road resident road requests. This is the season, I guess, where beavers are very active. Oh my gosh, the beavers. And so we've got a couple uh, culverts that are on watch for beavers, and then there's been other plugged culverts that we're getting calls about, and just various things. And then I, um, I um, begged off the cemetery commission meeting on Wednesday night because I have to go to my son's concert. But uh, just so you know, I'm also the cemetery commission's treasurer. And so I was going to go to their meeting and 
talk to them about what they're up to and what, what I can do for them. So you're earning your salary. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, yeah, that's, that's a little, little Thanks. bit. Thanks. Questions for Corey? Okay. Thanks. Oh, nice Thank you. Um, Jordan and Ann, anything on the lawsuit? No. Negative. No. Okay. Um, which takes us to the last item. Not bad. Um, road crew applicants. Car, you want to take us through that? Yeah. So two weeks ago, it was very interesting. <clears throat> Things didn't work out with Austin and Percy. However, within a couple of days, we had two other people that were viable candidates. So Steve Levenberg is a Calus resident. He's a uh, full-time, he's seeking full-time status. He's a, available immediately. He has uh, CDLB restricted. Um, and he's been working for the East Montpelier Highway Department for this past year. Uh, we got a good reference from his supervisor there. He drove a bus before that. Um, so feel good about that, putting him forward. And then Bruce Campbell, who I met today for the first time. I spoke to him on the phone a couple times. But um, Bruce has obviously known Fontaine worked for, for us for six years, I believe, plus came back last summer. Bruce only wants to do grading one to two days a week as needed, which is not bad. We, we could use that. We, we have a lot of grading to do right now, and we will have more to do um, as the season goes on. So um, <coughs> both of them were able to take the pre-employment drug screening this morning and gotten the results, but also handed them all the paperwork. <coughs> Steve got it all back, so I'm happy to answer any question. I have one. You said that uh, his CDL is restricted to an automatic. Yeah. How many automatic trucks does the the town currently have? Currently, none. You can drive the, the small truck. Yeah. Um, and we will have a new automatic this summer. I, don't, I have to check when that's coming. I think it's June. Yeah. I don't know. Now he's open to possibly... And he's open to upgrading that. Upgrading both to the manual and the Class A. Yes. So that we would that's have a said. backup for John, I, which is important to John. I really think that the Class A is, should be a minimum. A, cl a class B is, is very... Why, Donnie, can you explain Because that? nobody can move a trailer. So your Class A require it, it is for trailer usage. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a Class A CDL, you can't move a trailer with a piece of equipment on it. And is, Therefore, there, is there a lot you have to do to get a Class A? You have to do just, just go take a test for the trailer. Yeah, there's, when uh, I did it, you just take a test with the trailer. I didn't mind on a tractor trailer. Yeah, I believe you can that. take it. I mean, there's no reason that I, I believe from what I'm understanding is the town could actually take the their truck with their trailer up to the truck to take the test. You just need somebody to drive and get the hours and do the written part. Mm -hmm. And he's willing to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they do offer the class up and vary the actual yeah, tractor trailer. You probably won't get into that one for a while. But well, she was calling me every month, maybe now, but I know they were training a lot of do they crew do, guys from different parts. Do they give different deals to the town or municipalities? Because when I looked at that, that was well over 7000 per person. It might be slightly better for municipalities or they might have jacked it up. But yeah, I could go in, but she was, because Peter had expressed an interest in doing it this spring, um, you know, because John, this is like his second career, you know, so there's, who you knows how long he's gonna, and now that data was the other class A. Yeah, right. definitely need more people to have it. Well, I mean, just in case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. John can only be in one place at one time. Yeah. And if he's gonna sit in a truck moving a piece of equipment, it takes him away from where he probably should be. I spoke with somebody just happenstance in the store the other day who's on the East Callis crew and his work with um, Steve and also gave a great yeah, reference. East Montpelier. East Montpelier, yeah. 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 So, Was he the one that we had interviewed? Yes. Yeah. Does it change the insurance rates if if somebody has a class A versus a class B, 
I don't so. think so. I mean, my personally, my insurance doesn't change for that. I think the our insurance is driven by the vehicles, not the drivers so much. From what I can tell, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Yeah. So who interviewed him? You two? Yeah, two of us. Okay, and you both recommended him. Yeah, all right. I, I think my biggest thing at the time was that he was very half in the door and half out the door on whether he was wants to work for Catalyst or he's one billiard. He was kind of a, yeah. well, if they call, I'm, I'm going to go there. And he was presented to us. Barbara knows this. He was presented to us as, here, hire this person. We're, we're going to take him back. We, he's my yeah. going to take him back when we can afford him in July. And, and I, you know, and that was sort of Steve's orientation. But at this point, Steve's made it clear that he's, he doesn't have any allegiance to that. I mean, just as soon work for us. So do you need any action from us on this as well? Yes, we need to. We need to authorize Carrie to hire. Yeah, I can't hire people. Okay. Yeah. I think you should. Well, that's what a town manager does. That's I know, but we can. Okay. It's not no, a hard to authorize. So you, what you need then is a motion to authorize the hiring of Steve Levenberg as a full-time road crew member and hiring of Bruce Campbell as a part-time road crew member. Part-time temporary. Yeah. We didn't talk much about Bruce, um, but you're recommending that. Did you go, Did you interview him? I, I didn't interview Bruce, but I've seen him grading last year a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I would. Judging from that, I would say that's a good choice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's restricted in the sense he only wants to, to yeah. great, but he does a good job, and frankly, we really but need that's it. Right. So what we need. That's let's have another truck out there. Okay, okay. so can we move the uh, hiring of Steve Levenberg as a full time member and the hiring of Bruce Campbell as a part time member for just for part -time temporary. on a temporary basis? So we moved. Do we, do we need to uh, say the rates of pay relative to the it's all part part contract? Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Can I hear that, Steve? Do we need a do we need a side agreement with uh, with the union on Bruce? Uh, or not Bruce? Um, yeah. No, on Bruce. On as Bruce a temporary, the writer, yeah. We do not. I I had a good conversation with Larry okay. when about. Uh, Ogden, and they're fine with it. I will, I will inform them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. All right. We have a motion on, the, and it's and it's seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Uh, uh, Steve. Cool. I assume that Steve. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's it. Sorry. We did it. Let's go back to Look at that. 12 minutes uh, ahead of schedule. Oh my God. So, well, I, I, I know. 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 Know.